and welcome to a new year. How are you? Bit delicate still. Mm, okay, well, I'll take it easy for this first couple of issues. Um, so don't worry about it. It's uh, it's going to be fine. We're going to be looking after you. Don't worry. Um, we've got a great new season ahead of us uh, with some terrific stuff. And we're going to start with a stunt that really has been categorised as one of the very best ever performed. Um, I used to do a podcast called The Stunt Pod, and uh, we used to ask every person we we, uh, we spoke to if they ever had stunt envy. Um, they've seen a movie or TV, and there's a particular gag there that they thought, oh, I really wish I could have had a go at that. What would it be? And we had answers, all sorts of different answers from various TV shows, various movies. But this movie just kept coming back a time and time again. It's the movie Stagecoach from 1939. It is the drag underneath the horses by Yakima Kanut. And it has been, it's got lots of variants over the years. Many people have attempted it. Uh, and we're going to look at some of those attempts and see how they have changed as time has gone on. Uh, but it is a remarkable piece uh, of footage. And uh, so we're going to have a look at that and have a look at uh, some others having a go at it and see if we can compare them and see why it is an extraordinary gag that people still talk about today. And uh, it looks very much like this. So here we go. Uh, Yakima Canut in Stagecoach. Perfect transfer to the team. Didn't always go according to the plan. Here's an occasion where, watch, he tries to go and there's no L-step. That's a real stirrup he's using and he gets caught up, he gets hung up and gets thrown off the horse. So luckily, the L-step was introduced. Now look at the speed of the horses. They're not going very quickly. They're not racing along. They're being held. Drops down. Now they pick up a little bit and he hangs down. He gets dragged there holding and then lets go and comes out the other side. That was his work. That was his variation. Now, he varied that again a little later on. This is Zorro's Fighting Legion from 1939. This is crazy. This is, um, does the initial transfer, and this is a team of four horses, right? Drops down. Now, after this shot, down between the two horses. Now, look, look at the speed of this. They're, they're, they're really going along some click here, but... This is the point. As he lets go, his feet then come up and hit the plate between the two teams, effectively flipping him backwards. Look at his body flipping underneath. Now his head is to the left, his feet are to the right. He's facing forwards, face down. Look at where his feet are. Now as he lands, his feet then turn over. He's on his back with his feet pointing right and his head pointing left. Bit of camera trickery here because all of a sudden his, his head is now pointing backwards to the right and he manages to spin himself around and catch the bar at the back of the stagecoach. I am suspecting that they've They've done that in a couple of pieces, but that initial part where he slides under the horse and then this extraordinary backflip or back somersault underneath, pr presumably unintentionally, how you would do that, I don't know. Um, and for him to then say, well, we'll make use of that. We've turned it around. Let me try and grab onto the back of it, which he does here. Um, and now you can see the horses have picked up speed, certainly. Uh, this is likely to be these shots here. But look at them. Look at their ears are back and they're really starting to roller coaster. Um, and eventually Zorro uh, will then deposit the driver. Whee, get off. There he goes. Now, this is Legend of the Lone Ranger and Terry Leonard's version. This is a six team. Six horses. Terry makes the transfer. First thing to look at, you cannot see the end of of the tunnel. There is no gap between those horses. For whatever reason, they're wandering about all over the place, and that's part of the issue. Terry then starts to make his way down. He's working his way along the central bar, and at some point, because they're bang, he gets stood on and spat out the far end. Let's look at it again. He comes through, he starts to work his way down, which he's having to do, but th there's no gap, and it gets tighter and tighter to the point where he gets stepped on. Now he's loose. He's had to let go 
and is being spat out the far side, gets stepped on. Now he's all over the place. Now he can't... And look, his legs are this side, his head is that side. The horse just manages to the carriage wheel just misses his head but watch the this closest wheel this side which rolls over his legs up and down and that's where he was convinced he'd broken or lost his legs that's how bad it was he got chance later on to do it in raiders of the lost ark bit of a different scenario same basis though Look at the padding on his back. He's taking no precautions here. He has to go underneath the truck. Truck being driven by uh, Glenn Randall Jr. And there's no trench there. Now there's a trench. That's the trench that was pre-dug, allowing the vehicle to travel either side of it and just give him enough clearance to get underneath that truck, hook himself up and come out the far side, work his way back towards the truck and then be able to get on board and effectively complete the gag, the homage to... Yakima Canut and that stagecoach gag. That's what he wanted to do. Here, slightly different scenario from the movie Maverick. Uh, um, that's uh, um, Mel Gibson, of course, being doubled here uh, by Mick Rogers. Goes under the carriage, not the team, and now has to work his way back to get to the back of the carriage, spinning himself around, grabbing onto that luggage compartment at the back and being able to work his way over the top. But he, then he has to get towards the team. And that's where some of the problems start to happen because he had a real nightmare moment here, even though Terry Leonard was directing second unit on this and said, did you mean to do this? Because it looked spectacular. He jumps, he's down onto the first team. So he's got this, it's called a six up. There's two sets, uh, three sets of two. He works his way forwards. He jumped from one team to the next team. And he's forward, forward. And between each of the horses is what Mick referred to as an ironing board. It's a little board you can land on, gives you enough purchase to step on it and push forwards to get to the next team. When he makes that transition from the middle team to the end team, the first team there, look, you see the horses nodding. They stumble. The horse on his left stumbles. The horse on the right then stumbles. Watch as he jumps. Now, he hits the horse far too high up. He wasn't expecting to go that far forward and got him in the withers right at the very top. And down on the left-hand side, look, you can see the horse's nose going down. And more importantly, you can see the bar, uh, which is attaching them to the, to the carriage, go all the way down and very, very nearly caused the entire team to come down and uh, you know that would have been that would have been fatal if that had happened but it, extraordinary work and he managed somehow to hold it together here is uh, Tim Condren and who of course this is from Stunt Challenge 83 and he has spoken to to Yak about what he wants to do and they've talked at length about how to do it the pitfalls and so he makes the transfer from his horse to the front team then hangs down. He's going to do it the traditional way. He's going to work his way forward just a little bit, but he's going to hang on there. He's working his way forward. And then the difference here, once the camera angle changes, look at the big gap, a huge gap right down the middle that he can then go under and then be picked up. He picks that bar up at the back. This is one movement. Goes under, picks the bar up at the back, climbs the rope at the back and works his way towards the driver, who is stuntman Peter Mund and goes up there and holds the gun to his back. Curtains, mate, I'm in charge. That is his homage from the stagecoach drag. There we go. That is it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed all of that. We'll do it all again on Wednesday for the podcast and next Friday for another exciting episode of our YouTube channel. While you think about it, why not subscribe if you don't already do so and tell your friends and hit the notification bell to be the first in line to get all the hot off the press news. And of course, all the other links are in the description down below uh, for the Facebooks and the social networking and all that sort of business. So uh, go and join me there and we'll do it all again next week. Until then, bye for now.